So the folks at Epic Games have just announced Unreal Engine 5.3 the preview and we've already talked about some of the cool features that are coming over to Unreal Engine when we looked at the roadmap and shared some of the cool features that we like and some of the other impressive ones that are coming and today we're going to take a look at how you can actually rig your models directly in Unreal Engine since this is one of the coolest features that is now available alongside a couple of other features which we're going to make subsequent videos about and with that said let's dive right in. So first things first, once you have an Unreal Engine launcher, you can download Unreal Engine 5.3 the preview and with that we're going to simply create a new project and load in a model which you downloaded off the internet. Now links to this model is going to be in the description for those who like to get this and from here is where we actually get things started. So the very first thing which we'll need to do is to go over to edit, go over to plugins and we need to type in either skeleton or skin. Now once you type this in, you need to turn on this particular plugin and restart Unreal Engine. Now there's a couple of other plugins which we're going to talk about in subsequent videos like the Chaos Cloud and also a few more that is now available. All of these are currently in experimental and they are super cool to play with and also report bugs. Now for us to actually start rigging, first thing for us to do is to right click then go over to convert to skeletal mesh and we're going to say we'd like to create a brand new one, click on convert and then you'll notice we have the skeletal mesh and the skeleton. Now these two are different. This one deals with you controlling whatever you've rigged before, Why? this is where you actually do the rigging. So I'm just going to double click on this and you would notice we have a very interesting UI. So let's just go ahead and make sure that we have this UI covering our screen. And the first things you need to understand about rigging with this is this is extremely similar to what you have in Maya. We're probably going to do a compare and contrast video later, but for this, how you get to work with this is extremely similar with Maya. So just in case you've been working with Maya, this is exactly the same thing. And to get started, go over to skeleton, click on edit skeleton. You'll notice you have the add and edit. Now within the add section is where you start adding joints. You do have your root joint already. So you can start adding joints all the way up. And to add those joints is very simple. And just like you have in Maya, this actually looks at the mesh and places the joint in the center. So I'm just gonna add one joint there, add another joint here, and we can add a few more joints. So, and to each joints that you add, you can also make positional changes to them. Now, once you're done, you can right click and let go, select the transform object and transform those joints to where you want it to be. Now, just like in every form of rigging, rotation is not going to be an option as you would like the joints to be in zero rotations across the axis. Now, if you like to build more joints, what you need to do is to click on the select object tool, go back and click on the add button, select on the joint which you would like to use as the root joint. In this case, we might want to start with this. And if you click out, you now create a new joint. So if you're coming from Maya, you find this extremely simple to work with. And just like when you're traditionally rigging your model, at certain points, once you have extra points like this, you might want to add additional joints to hold the form of your model. So in this case, what we're going to do, because we have a very beefy model, we're going to add additional points that will simply act as the rib sections and then we can talk about how you proceed to mirroring your joints. And so for us, what we're doing is we simply click, add a joint, right click to stop, click, and then add another joint. So you can do this for all of the parts that you want to add additional joints. So in sections like this as well, we can right click to make sure that we're not clicking, click to make sure that we have the joint selected, and we can click to just add one extra joint right there. And now that we're done rigging one side of the model, what I would suggest you do is to simply go over to the edit section and you can start naming your joint. This is extremely necessary. So if you would like to have more like a concrete joint that you're working with, I would advise that you name this joint. So you can select the joint, come here and name this, and you can do this for every other part of the joint. But for the purpose of this video, what we're going to do is pretty simple as we would like to mirror this joint. So I'm just gonna click on one of these chains and mirror it. Now, the reason why you're not clicking from here is this is going to mirror from the root all the way to the other side. So you need to select a part that already has a root connected and you can click on the word mirror. And once you do that, you'd notice that you have that mirrored. You can do the same thing here. So I'm just gonna select that and I can click on the word mirror and we have that. And I can do this for these other ones. I can click on mirror, select that, mirror this one and also mirror this other one. The next thing I'd like to do is to review the model that we have. And once we're comfortable with this, we can now go over to the skin section. Now, if you have bone orientations that are not fixed properly, you can definitely use the orient button to actually get that. Or you can turn on the auto orient and this would automatically orient your joints for you. Every other thing that has to do with the visibility of your joints within your viewport exists right here. And if you like to reparent your joints, you can actually use this button to do that. And once you're done, you can now click on skin. 
Now within the skin section, you don't necessarily need to turn on anything. So what we're going to do is just hit on the word accept and then click on bind skin. And once you click on bind skin and click on the word accept one more time, automatically this binds the skin. And how do you know? If you go over to the weight section and you choose any of this joint around here, you can see the weights that this has. And each of these points that this shows you tells you the amount of influence that the joint has on each of these parts. And to edit each of these weights, you need to use the brush. And this brush does have its own setting, which you're going to definitely play with, especially if you're looking for setting specific results. You can reduce the brush by using the radius button and you can proceed to paint the weight that you want. So depending on the joint that you like to paint the weight, you can paint in that way. If you like to remove the weight, you can go over to replace and you can turn down the strength and you can use this to replace that. So in this case, we don't want this joint to have influence around here. So we're just simply going to go ahead and turn this all the way off. So let's get that going and I can turn this off. Now in certain situations like this, where you notice they have stubborn weight like this, what you need to do is find a corresponding joint. Like in this case, we have a joint here. We can simply replace that and that would automatically take care of this. So once we proceed to replace that, if we go back to this joint that is here, you notice that that reduces. So we can set this down to zero and paint this all the way out. So this way you can easily, you can easily edit your joints however you want. So let's simply go through all our joints and make sure that we have them the way we want. And once you're ready, you can click on the accept button. Oh, and by the way, for you to smooth any of these things, you need to just simply crank the strength just about a point and then you can use this to smooth. Now, we did try out the relax. The relax doesn't seem to relax a lot because, you know, with what we have here, it is supposed to be more like what you get with smooth, but that doesn't seem to be working that much. But the replace simply works if you choose to work with the strength. You can also play with the colors that you want to view. So depending on the color you like to preview your character in, you can actually go ahead and play with that. Now once you're done, you can click on accept and you also have a few other things that you might want to explore with. So in this case, you also have the deform and within this case, you can come through and deform your mesh. This gives you some sort of sculpting tool set that you can work with. So you can deform the mesh if you like and you can also play with the dynamic sculpts which you can use like Dean Topo for Blender or Sculptris Pro if you're coming from ZBrush. You also got the smooth tool which you can use to smoothen your entire model. We need to undo that. And you also have like your offset which you can use to offset the model. You can see our model becomes more of a blob at this point. If you like to wrap your model, you can also wrap the model, you can displace that, and you've just got a ton of tools here that you can work with. Within the model section, you can edit your entire model, like setting some parts to become polygroups if you like to have that. If you like to deform those polygroups that you've created, you can also proceed to do that right here. And finally, you have your mesh section, which allows you to remesh your entire mesh, simplify the mesh, weld setting points, and add a few set of jackets by simply removing hidden triangles that exist with your mesh. Now, once you're done with any of these or all of them, you can now go ahead and save. So I'm just gonna click on cancel because we're not doing any of that. Click on save, save your entire model, and you can close this. Now, once you close it, if you now go over to the skeleton section, not the skeletal mesh, the skeleton, you can double click and you have yourself your model. Now, this is where you get to start testing your model to see if it actually works. Here we can click on the root and we can move the model and you can see we have the root working. We can find where we think the head is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and find that. That seems to be the jaw. So I guess the head should be somewhere around here. So we can find that and we're going to simply rotate this head. So we can rotate the head. Let's take a look at that. So we can rotate the head and you can see that we have our head rotation working. We can proceed to go over to the arm section and we can play with the arm and you notice that we have a nice arm movement right there. We can go down the hierarchy of the arm and we can also play with certain sections like that. And you can see all of these working how they are supposed to. Let's take a look at the legs and see what we've got. So we'll go down to the legs section and we can also play with the leg movement. So we do have that. Of course, you would notice that we're losing some volumes and this is where you actually need to add a few joints just to hold those volumes in place. And for the tummy, we can also go ahead and explore that. So we can go in and we can explore the tummy. We can also explore the movement right here. And this is basically 
how you proceed to rig your entire model right here in Unreal Engine 5.3. So if you've been wondering how you can get started with that, this is extremely easy to get started with and you can actually start rigging your stuff. This makes a lot of sense and I'm willing to try out something that would be super cool, like exploring bringing a full model from ZBrush into Unreal Engine and see if you can rig it. And something else which would be super cool to have here in Unreal Engine is to see the method which is being used to bind the object. So at this point, we don't know if it's dual cutaneum, if it's weighted, voxel, or if it's just a simple binding method that's been used. All we know is once you go ahead and hit bind skin this automatically binds the skin so this is it for those who are thinking about playing with unreal engine 5.3 and you're wondering how you can rig your models directly here in unreal engine then this is extremely possible and it is interesting to see this feature alongside some of the cool features that are now available in unreal engine 5.3 tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and until i see you guys in the next one Peace.